The Kremlin has accused Ukraine of using underwater drones in an attack on the main bridge linking Russia and the territory it occupies in Crimea. The Kerch Bridge spans 12 miles and is a key tool in connecting the Crimean Peninsula to the Russian mainland. Joining me now is former senior Royal Navy officer Rear Admiral Chris Parry. Evening, Chris. Thanks for uh, being with me. So Russia says these are water-based drones or unmanned surface vessels. Uh, just to, excuse my ignorance, but just explain what they mean. How do these work? Well, essentially what they are, they're um, rather like the ones that are used in the air. They're unmanned uh, uh, vehicles. They normally go just below the surface of the uh, sea. Uh, they're controlled by uh, signals either through basic radio or from satellite communications as well. And they're steered onto their target and exploded uh, in kamikaze fashion. Um, what the Ukrainians have tried to do in the past is, either successfully or not, attack some of the Russian installations around Sevastopol. Uh, they've had a crack at uh, some of the ships that are alongside, which is why the Russians obviously have put in place uh, what in the past we would have considered anti-torpedo defences, nets and obstructions and things like that. Um, and basically, they're a very potent tool. And as you say, Mark, it's, uh, the bridge itself is 12 miles long, uh, and you can put these uh, unmanned drones in almost anywhere to take out one of these piles. And of course, the damage uh, on one of the piles is going to take a long time to uh, put right again. Right, and presumably, they're relatively cheap to use. Um, how significant are they? I mean, are we talking about a new sort of era, in a sense, in naval warfare? They actually go back to the Second World War, Mark, so they're not exactly new. I think their, their use uh, for this sort of mission uh, is new. It is the shape of the future. I think we have to get used to unmanned vehicles by air, land and, and sea in the future battle space. And particularly underwater drones uh, are very good for clandestine, deniable and ambiguous uh, activities like this. Uh, the Ukrainians could have denied it if they wanted to. But there'd been no evidence, really, that they'd done it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a clear warning for the free world countries as well about their infrastructure and indeed uh, their vulnerabilities in any time of uh, conflict or war. I suppose it could have been a, you know, a ship laden with explosives or some sort of special forces operation, but it does seem that, you know... Um, uh, Russia is saying drones and Ukraine, as you say, doesn't seem to be doing much to disabuse them. And Russia is also accusing the West or Western countries of being complicit in the attacks. I mean, do you think that's at all likely, apart from perhaps some sort of intelligence uh, uh, input? Well, I mean, I think the way that Ukraine is being supplied at the moment, I should think there's quite a lot of technology and expertise being applied to this. All the Ukrainians have to do is ask, I think, and a lot of commercial companies are going to say, yes, we can provide you with the technology to build these kits. Uh, frankly, Mark, you and I could build one of these um, in our garden shed. Uh, the technology is not that difficult. We've seen uh, in Colombia... Uh, we see drug barons, for example, using underwater drones like this to transport uh, drugs from Colombia to uh, the Caribbean and onwards to the United States. So this technology has been around a while. It's not very sophisticated. Uh, all you have to do is, as I say, build it, put some explosives in the, in the front end, and you can blow almost anything up. Because more broadly speaking, Chris, Russia, I assume, has clear naval supremacy in the Black Sea and the Sea of, of Azov and so forth? Uh, absolutely. And so what Ukraine has to do is look for what we call asymmetric ways of getting back uh, at, at Russia. And the Kerch uh, Strait Bridge has been a real totem of the occupation of uh, Crimea. Uh, and so every, any chance they get, the Ukrainians will have a go at that bridge. Um, uh, it's a vital logistics route for the Russians who are occupying Crimea. It, it's a vital artery also for supplying the uh, the naval and air base, a significant one, at Sevastopol. Uh, and given the fact that the Ukrainians currently are dominating the water supply from the north down into Crimea, uh, I think the continued vulnerabilities of the Kerch uh, Strait Bridge is going to be a real headache and worry for the Russians. Right, so so likely to come under renewed attack as the as the conflict goes on. 
It's always going to be a target. Uh, as we said earlier, it's it's 12 miles wide. You can't defend all of it. You can't put obstructions and nets in the way. Uh, and I would think we can expect uh, more attacks in future. Uh, and if the Russians can't actually jam the signals that control these uh, unmanned drones, either in normal radio frequencies or the uh, the satellite channels, then we can expect this to be stepped up in the weeks ahead, I would suggest. And just finally, I mean, could the Ukrainians cause even more damage by using, you know, longer range missiles or, or, or something? I mean, could if they wanted to? Well, at the moment, the, the missiles they have uh, and also the artillery rounds are pretty limited. And the Americans, of course, have been very specific about the range of those uh, weapons. Uh, they certainly could uh, use uh, longer range ballistic missiles if they were supplied with them and also uh, longer range cruise missiles as well. The Ukrainians have been very inventive and very innovative with some of the technology that they have. So what I've been saying to people recently is um, if it's possible, uh, then it's going to happen. Uh, and uh, I think uh, any any sort of missile that can be used, uh, whether it's uh, below the surface, on the surface, uh, or above, uh, is definitely in the game. Uh, the Russians, of course, are, are trying to defend it. They've got air defences uh, around the bridge and other vital installations. Uh, they have got uh, sort of obstructions, uh, but they can't defend the whole of that bridge. Uh, and as I said, it'll be an absolute nightmare uh, for the Russians to have to defend. Okay. Chris Parry, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you.